Welcome to Swamp Shangri-La, Rule 11, here in the heart of the South Carolina Low Country. It is a nice, balmy 95 to 97 degrees here in the swamplands. Folks, when it's like this, you can just stand and sweat. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to move. You don't even have to do anything but breathe. And you can see me, I'm gleaming. It ain't pretty. It isn't. But that's how we live. You get used to it, unfortunately. So, on with the show. What we are going to talk about today are tractors. We are going to walk you through the controls on Little Red, our 2605 old school Massey Ferguson tractor. That way, if you, the viewer, decide to go out and get an old school tractor and it does not have a hydroshift transmission per se, you'll have at least some information to digest a little bit of a go to manual. Now, keep in mind, each tractor is unique and different. So you kind of got to look at and gauge how it works from there. But if it's got twin poles, meaning, you know, twin shifts, the like, they're all pretty well on par the same. At least you'll have uh, something to start with. So stick around. We got good stuff coming. All right, so what we're going to do, folks, is give you, the viewer, an overview of the controls that we have on this tractor. So the lovely director will pan to the clutch, which is right here in front of her. And you see right here, we have the clutch. The clutch is an integral part of a tractor. I don't care what style you operate, it is a very crucial part. This tractor in particular has a two-stage clutch. First stage operates a gear shift, second stage is all the way down. So first stage, half depressed, second stage, totally in, total depression to operate your PTO. Now your PTO is right here underneath the operator seat. You can see it's a simple shifter where you push down when you depress the clutch all the way down for on position or off. This is a single stage PTO not a two-stage. Some tractors will have a two-speed PTO or a two-stage PTO. This is a real simple little tractor, so it's a single-stage PTO. So, now let's talk about what makes this thing move forward. Uh, now let's talk about the transmission on this tractor. You can see we have two sticks. We have a tr the transmission and we have transfer case. Transmission has four forward gears, one reverse gear for each range. Turtle, low range, rabbit, high range. So in effect, you have, you know, an eight speed, two reverse speed transmission. Now I know you, the viewer right now, are probably saying, oh, I am not touching that thing. Well, that's kind of common for a lot of machinery. And it sounds intimidating, but it's really not. And I'm going to explain why. Number one, you're not ever going to be in high range, except if you are driving out on a road, and then the chances of that happening are slim and none. Uh, if you're operating this thing on your property, you're going to be in first gear all the time, and at the most second or even third, depending on what you're doing, where you're, if you're mowing, what the application is, because you want to maintain positive control over your machinery, so, you're going to be mowing in first and second gear all the time to get maximum RPM, your PTO, and maximum control over your machinery. So, keep that in mind. All right, now let's talk about the right side controls right here. You'll notice you have a locking key that ties on to two independent brake pedals. That's how you're joined up. Each rear tire has its own brake. So when they're tied in together, they brake in unison. So that's how tractors work. That way, if you have to use them independently, you can. And you can kind of steer with them too, depending on the situation. You come down on this model tractor, you'll see a little pinion down there is actually an accelerator bar. So you'll have a column accelerator, which we will cover here in a minute, but that is your foot accelerator or your gas pedal. So you come right now, folks, right here to your right side. And this is where you handle your implement control right here. This is the depth right here of your implement. You know, your mowing deck and the like. 
Now this other lever is commonly referred to as a draft control. That'll be the maximum depth that the thing can go. So if you're doing a lot of grading, things of that nature, sometimes you'll run a draft control. That way it won't go any deeper and it'll maintain a constant draft on it or constant depth. So with this right here, the way I have my um, outrigger set up, generally when I'm at number five right here, that is around the max I am going for my cutting depth as far as my deck height on my bush hog. Any lower than that, that's going to possibly try to dive the thing in nose first, and that's never a good thing. So you got to get a feel for what is the optimum range for your implements and the like. That way you get an idea of what you need to do to make it work for your application. So, coming around next, we're going to take you to the steering column. So, the steering column right here, you see we have a key. And we have a kill switch. Old-fashioned kill switch, guys. Coming up the column, we have a column throttle. That you can see has the turtle and the rabbit right there. As well as hazard lights and we have lights on the other side you also have a little horn right here and pretty much this is a very simple bare bones tractor and then finally guys we have our loader control right here so stick around we are going to walk you through this and we're going to show you how to get this tractor into operational configuration so now that you kind of got an idea of what's what we're going to really show you how to use this thing and get it from sitting still to being able to move it. Okay, let's talk starting configuration for this tractor or any gear shift tractor for that matter. Both sticks need to be in neutral. By being in neutral means they are not in gear. If you got play on the stick, you can move it. They are in a state of neutral. From there, you will be able to start the tractor. Now, a lot of tractors, example this one, you only need a battery to start it. You do not need the battery at all in order for it to, to operate. So basically, you start the tractor up, you can turn the ignition off, and because this is a mechanical tractor, all the battery will do is operate your gauges. And that's all it does, as well as lights and things of that nature. But, from a mechanical standpoint, hydraulics, movement, that has nothing to do with it. So once you've uh, achieved ignition and you are now operating your tractor, you don't need the battery anymore if you choose to turn it off. So, I'll demonstrate both. And bear with me, because I'm not going to do any talking, because it's kind of hard once this thing is operating. But I will turn it over, then I'll pull the ignition key out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you see what I was talking about, folks, right there you had your state of neutral because we did get the engine to turn over. And then I turned off the ignition itself and then the engine continued to run, which is very common for mechanical, old school mechanical tractors, trucks, the like, and uh, heavy machinery. Now, what we're going to do next is discuss getting this thing ready to operate. Okay, you're there, you're ready to start mowing, what do I do? You can see how the parking gate brake engaged right here, you always want that on. What you're gonna wanna do, and let me walk you through the steps, because again, with the engine noise, it's kinda hard for me to start yelling into the microphone and for you, the viewer, to get a good feedback. So, 
once you have this thing started, what you're going to want to do is lift back right here on your loader. For loader controls, back is up, up is down, and then to the left is curling up, and to the right is curling down. And then if this was a different style bucket and you had a four-way bucket where you, like we have on Big Blondie, clamshell style bucket, like you would either have a second stick or a lot of times now they have button or toggle controls up here, you'd have a secondary hydraulic actuator. But this is just an old school up and down bucket. So the loader goes up and down and the bucket goes up and down. That's all there is to it. So basically, what you're going to want to do is, once you start this, you get it warming up, don't worry about putting it in gear. What you want to do is make it where it is in a configuration where you can move it. So what you're going to do is, once it's started, you're going to lift back on your loader, get that bucket off the ground. Then you're going to come over here to your three-point hitch control that we pointed out here on the side. And you're going to put it at number six. You're going to put it all the way back. And that way, you get both implements off the ground. Then, you will put it into first gear and then low range using the clutch. So, let me walk you through that. So, Again, start, and you, all bucket controls, folks, also have a little chart on them. Right here, it has an arrow with a bucket, meaning bucket up, boom up. So you pull back, and it's boom up. So that, and then the higher the number on the three-point control, the higher the elevation, of that platform, the deck, implement what you have on the back. So, start, loader, attachment, and then we will shut off the tractor and go from there. So at this stage, you can now see that the bucket is up, and I always try to put the bucket elevation right there on par with the uh, nose of my uh, hood right there. That way I have a couple feet between that bucket bottom and the ground. That way I'm not going to hit anything, I don't have to worry about the bucket bouncing and the like. So, now, let's talk about getting this thing in a movable configuration. You are now in a movable configuration. Now, if you choose to move it, now you may use your transmission. So, what we're going to do is now that we have it in this configuration, we are going to start it and then put it in the first gear, low range. And let me explain something else to you, the viewer. I know a lot of you, when you if you ever try to learn a stick shift, and the like, you always had the clutch problem. Everybody does when they start out. And it's like, you know, pretty much you put it in gear and then you let off the clutch and there's chunk, 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 chunk. You do not have that problem with machinery transmissions, constant drive stick shift transmissions because the gearing has so much torque that you could put it in and you could just slap off the clutch and it's going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all the way in turtle. That way 
it's going to require throttle to move forward. And you will see how it wants to pull just using that clutch. You don't have to worry about, as the term often is used, is feathering the clutch. You just push that clutch halfway in, and I'll be flat out honest with you folks, I've used this thing without the clutch. A lot of people have. And it's the way it plays out. So now, we have it in a movable configuration. We have the mowing deck up, and we have the loader up. So that means when I move it, I am not gonna hit anything. The next thing I'm gonna do is release the parking brake. You can release it before or after you start the tractor. So now let's start it up and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into gear and we're gonna see about watching this thing engage. So bear with me. So what you saw is I put it into first gear low range, and then I put it into reverse gear low range. And you saw how that constant drive transmission works. You put it in gear, you put in on the clutch to help the transmission work better. And you can see how the machine just wants to pull. Okay, now I'm going to discuss PTO operation. PTO operation is very similar to just gear shifts. It's just a single gear you put into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the tractor up. I'm going to lower the mowing deck to number five height. That's where I have my deck set up. And then I'm going to engage the PTO. Now, when you engage a PTO, you want to be at maximum RPM. That way, you get maximum power takeoff, which is what PTO stands for. And that way, you have maximum efficiency of your mower. So let's start it up, and we're going to get this show on the road. So, you can see what I was talking about is a two-stage clutch. You depress the clutch all the way in, then you engage your PTO all the way to the floor, and that'll be your PTO engagement for the clutch itself as the second stage. Just your first one right here, and you can feel it when you depress it. The first one, you got to stop right there. So you press it in, boom. You gotta stop. Now you press it all the way in to the floor. That's your second stage. But right here, the initial one, boom. You feel a, a little wall right there. And that's where the max of your clutch is for your standard transmission. All the way to the floor, PTO. So that walks you through a two-stage clutch. But you can see what I'm talking about when I say the transmission will pull you because of the torque. 
and you don't have to worry about that old jagoo, 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 you know, style. You're shifting gears and then you jump the transmission and you're going down the road or you're trying to drive in your backyard and you're in your little Isuzu pickup that your brother got and you're trying to figure out how to drive it and it's just goo, 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 goo. You know, you're getting sick as you're driving down the road. Yeah, no, you don't have to worry about that. Constant uh, drive transmission, guys. Plug and play. If you want to use a moniker, first gear, put it in gear, you're rolling. So, let's discuss you're driving, you're operating it, and then, uh oh, now what do I do? I always drive with one boot generally on the clutch and one boot on the brakes. Okay, they're not depressed. You got to push in to depress either one of them. So basically, you can set your boots up here like a bird of paradise if you want. Or you can just have it hanging out. Because let me show you something. You can have this thing in gear all day long. And so if you're driving around and you hit that uh-oh scenario, you're bush hogging and you're scared of what's going on, boot on the brake knock it out of gear i didn't have to use the clutch this thing will come out of gear just as easy as you please and it will go back into gear as well the clutch makes it go easier but if you need to reach down and slap it out of gear just reach down and slap it right out of gear so we hope this has given you a little bit of intro so now we're going to take the mic off and i'm just going to do a non-verbal walking through the steps and the steps are we're going to start up the tractor we're going to start put in pto we're going to put into gear and then we're going to use the mowing deck and go forward about 10 feet and you'll see what i'm talking about so bear with me and let's see what happens Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the video. You can see we did a little snapshot right there of how you operate a real simple old school tractor. And the main thing to remember, whatever you do in this world, whatever you go to try to accomplish, practice makes perfect. Get out there in your backyard, your back 40, what have you guys. Work that clutch, work the brakes, practice working the brakes independently. Watch the nose pivot side to side when you do it. Work the loader controls, you know. Uh, something I always do when I get on a piece of equipment, before I even put that thing in gear, I'll operate, when I'm on a new piece of equipment, I'll operate the loader controls to see how the responsiveness is to see the state of the hydraulic pump and the hydraulics in general. Uh, whatever attachments are on there and the like, I'll often operate those before I even put it in gear. Now the motor will be running. It has to in order to operate the hydraulics. So that'll give me an idea of the overall state of the machine. 
because if I know the hydraulics are pretty stout and they're pretty sound, then I know the machine will be pretty well good to go as well. So hopefully this has been a good informative video for you. And I hopefully you got some good takeaway from it. So we're going to cool off for a little while. So we'll see you on the next one, guys. Be good.